in any human activity, you will find variations between individuals in the way they do things and in their capacities for work. But for any one individual, there are variations too. Under one set of conditions, he may be eager, alert, and highly productive. Under another set of conditions, the same individual may be listless and indifferent. We know, of course, that fatigue, illness, and other physiological conditions set limits to human performance. So too do the factors of habit and motivation. How can we analyze these factors the better to understand them? Laboratory experiments with animals provide a simple approach to the question, where we can study the animals under controlled conditions. In this glass box, a hungry pigeon has already learned that when he pecks at the disc, food as reinforcement appears briefly in the food trough below the disc. He also knows that as the food is released, a buzzer sounds and a light shines in the trough. Now, we are going to vary the schedule of reinforcement and observe what happens to the pigeon's behavior. We will begin with a schedule of feeding which we call fixed ratio reinforcement. We've started this bird on a schedule of reinforcement for every fifth peck on the disc. The more pecking he does, the more food he receives. In other words, this bird is on piecework, which is what we mean by fixed ratio reinforcement. Within two and a half minutes, the behavior under this schedule of reinforcement has become quite fixed, and the pigeon is pecking at a high rate. Let's experiment with another schedule called fixed interval reinforcement. This is more like working on a salary rather than on piecework wages. This bird is reinforced only at the end of each one minute period, even if he pecks a hundred times, though he must peck the disc at least once to activate the food dispenser. He soon learns the minimum amount of work he must do for this type of reinforcement schedule and takes it easy in between payoff times. Thus, we see the bird behaving quite differently than he did previously on a fixed ratio schedule. It's getting closer to lunchtime. Now he goes to pack again, and there's the payoff. Behavior on these two schedules can be compared even more strikingly by alternating fixed ratio and fixed interval. The apparatus is first set up so that when the disc is black, he's on fixed ratio or piecework, and is paid after every fifth peck regardless of time. When the disc is white, he is paid on fixed interval that is, by pecking once after a one-minute waiting period. In the early portion of each fixed interval, our feathered friend is quite leisurely. He makes an occasional peck or two just to be sure the rules haven't been changed. Somehow, he has learned to gauge the passage of time. As the one-minute waiting period nears its end, he begins to get down to business. Let's change back to a black disc. Now watch the fixed ratio, five fast pecks and reinforcement. Uh-oh, he sees the white disc again, which he knows means fixed interval. One farewell peck and Junior is playing the waiting game again. 
With human beings, too, different reinforcement schedules are accompanied by remarkable differences in behavior. First, let's observe the effect of fixed ratio reinforcement. Girls and boys, you have a problem sheet in front of you. When you finish, please raise your hand and I will come and check your work. If all answers are correct, you may choose a project to work on, such as reading, weaving, basket making, or painting at the easel. Now start. The children are now on a fixed ratio reinforcement. In other words, the sooner the children finish their assignment, the sooner they will get their reinforcement in the form of being given a free period for activity of their own choosing. Another busy one interested in finishing so he can get his reinforcement. Some children begin the assignment immediately. Many of the children realize they have more than enough time to meet the deadline and therefore dawdle through the early portion of it. The reinforcement, in other words, will come only at the end of a fixed interval. Ten minutes have ticked away, and several of the late starters feel it's time to get moving. Seven minutes gone, and the tempo of the work visibly increases. One minute left to go, and everybody's working. Highly typical behavior in a fixed interval schedule. Now, let's demonstrate another kind of schedule, variable interval reinforcement. This pigeon, for example, is being reinforced 60 times every hour, but the reinforcements come at irregular intervals. Steady work output is a characteristic of variable interval reinforcement. Like a man betting on the horses or feeding quarters into a one-armed bandit, this pigeon never knows when he'll hit the jackpot. So, like a lot of people, he hates to quit. Now, let's see how human beings respond to variable interval reinforcement. Each of these children hopes to receive the teacher's praise and approval given publicly. But none of them knows when the reinforcement will come, if at all. Oh, that's very nice, Paul. Thus, these children maintain a very high rate of continuous activity on variable interval reinforcement. What a nice paper, Lois. Very nice work. Another characteristic of this type of reinforcement schedule is that behavior tends to persist long after the last reinforcement. 
We can see this in an experiment to measure the time it takes to get extinction of the behavior after variable interval reinforcement. We'll do this demonstration with a hungry pigeon that is put on variable interval reinforcement for only one minute before we begin the extinction procedure. During this minute, he is being reinforced a number of times, but the reinforcements come at irregular intervals, and the pigeon therefore never knows exactly when the reinforcement will come. After just one minute of this reinforcement schedule, we shall give the pigeon no more food at all in order to get him to stop pecking. There's the last reinforcement. Now we flip the switch on him. That's all there is. There isn't going to be any more. But an organism that has been on variable interval reinforcement is going to take some convincing. Notice that the clock for this experiment is a regular 12-hour clock. Over half an hour later, still no extinction of the pecking behavior. Over 3,100 responses and still going strong. One hour and a half. Extinction has probably begun, but hope springs eternal in pigeons and people trained on variable interval reinforcement. responses and still at it. Two and a half hours. The learned behavior still persists. Over 5,000 responses so far, but he's gradually slowing down. At last, after three and a half hours, we obtain fairly complete extinction of an activity that was set in motion by just one minute of variable interval reinforcement. This slow extinction after variable interval reinforcement cannot be demonstrated as simply with human beings. There are many more complex factors involved. However, many of the same basic principles apply as in this classroom situation, for example. Boys and girls, I have a list of words here. Tell me what means of transportation each one suggests to you. The first one, porthole. Chip. Good. Tandem. And? A bicycle for two. Good. Roundhouse. John? Train. John enjoys showing that he knows the answers to these questions. But the teacher feels that other pupils should be given a chance too. So she doesn't call on John again. On top of the chest. Very good. Ties. Susan. A railroad. Good. John, however, continues to raise his hand. Perhaps he wants to let the teacher know that he knows the answers. But even more important is his hope that he will be called on again. Blowout. Extinction of John's hand raising is mighty slow. Warp. Mark. Shit. Right. Runway. Harold. Eventually, as John realizes he is being deliberately passed over, his hand begins to hesitate. Finally, the behavior is extinguished, and he raises his hand no more during this set of questions.
In these experiments, we have demonstrated the effect on behavior and work output of three schedules of reinforcement. Fixed ratio, fixed interval, and variable interval. We have seen that when an organism gets paid in direct ratio to the amount of work done, work output is fairly constant. We have also seen that when an organism is required to wait a fixed period of time and then is paid for a minimum amount of work, the total output of work may fall off and the little work that is done comes around payoff time. And finally, we have seen that when the organism is paid at irregular intervals, without any clear relationship to time or to work output, the organism works continuously and at a very high rate. Another feature of variable interval reinforcement is that the behavior persists long after the reinforcement is discontinued. In other words, extinction of the behavior is extremely slow after the organism has been on a variable interval reinforcement schedule. This film has illustrated certain resemblances between the ways pigeons behave in this box under varying reinforcement schedules and the ways people behave under various conditions and circumstances. In general, then, the effects of reinforcement on behavior vary according to the kind of schedule on which reinforcement takes place. These effects clearly have an important bearing on many aspects of education, work, and social adjustment, and present a challenging field for further research. <laughs>